This is a very interesting pair of balloon back campaign chairs and they stand out from any others that we've had for two reasons. So let's have a look at them. Well, firstly, as you probably noticed, and a good indication <coughs> is by uh, having a balloon back by E. Ross and Co. next to it, is the height of these chairs. They're approximately one and a half inches lower in height than a standard chair of the period. Now, what would the reason have been for that? Well, it's very difficult to be sure, but we could guess that it was to do with, with space saving. We know that the Army and Navy store in 1883, when they described a package of campaign equipment that you could buy, which was very similar to that offered by Ross of Dublin, where you would have a sideboard and within it you would pack a uh, chaise lounge, easy chair, um, you'd have the column and legs for a dining table with a top made out of part of the packing case and you could have within that a set of either four or six what they described as small chairs. Um, perhaps the small referred to the size they were slightly smaller than standard to easily fit within the case or perhaps it was uh, a simple description for a dining chair rather than in an easy chair and of course if you have a set of chairs to use which are an inch and a half lower than a standard chair presumably the table that you would use them at has also got to be that little bit lower so the hole might help you reduce the size of your cabinet um, packing case to take all of the contents. We can only guess at that. We haven't uh, found the evidence through research yet to, to prove that, but it's a very interesting idea, I think. Now, the second thing which is very unusual about these chairs is the timber. They're made out of bird's eye maple and perhaps if I come a little bit closer you can see on this very ornately and nicely carved and turned leg the wood. Um, we've had one campaign easy chair made out of maple before but it's not a wood that we typically associate with campaign furniture or we see that often. So they stand out for that um, and in their day Certainly, um, I can imagine that an officer would be quite proud to have such a, a showy, good looking wood for their furniture. And of course, they also would have um, been very pleased to have balloon bat chairs, um, which were extremely fashionable in the uh, 1850s, 60s, 70s. A design which is incredibly impractical for domestic furniture, let alone campaign furniture, because this structure, of course, is never going to be that strong. It's never going to take as much pressure as a standard square back chair. They're far more liable to damage. These two were very lucky in that there's no damage on these sections, but it's very, very common to find balloon backs which are damaged around that area. So, how do they come apart? Well, again, they're different to the Ross chair shown in the way it comes apart. The Ross chair, all four legs unscrew with the back legs having long bolts going into the back to secure it. With this chair, the back is all one section. So we can see underneath here, we've got three bolts. Two of them remove the seat and one releases the seat frame to the back, which is hinged. So the frame and the back remain as one part, but the seat folds to, uh, to pack down for travel. Another interesting point on these chairs, which is again something we don't often see, 
um, on chairs, on tables, yes, but not so much on chairs, is that it's got brass collars around the top of the front legs, further indication that um, from a distance you can see that they're made to travel. So these legs unscrew quite simply, as you'd expect. They've got uh, brass bolts rather than steel. Again, another little quirk to the design. Those come off quite easily. We'll undo the bolts for the seat. So the seat frame then comes away quite quickly. And now we're going to do the bolt for the frame to the back. And that hinges like that. So you can stack four or six of these chairs in a row and they're going to take a much smaller amount of space. Now, who came up with this design? It's not Ross & Co, that's for sure. Um, and again, we can only guess because they're not marked. What we do know is that in uh, W. Blackie and Sons book as the assistant uh, cabinet maker, he did illustrate very, very similar chairs. The only difference being that they had a long bolt which went, went from the back all the way through the frame to the front of the frame to uh, further secure it. This one um, and its pair have only ever had a single bolt. It's likely there were a number of different companies making um, these chairs. But what we do know is that uh, they stand out for their size and the timber that has been used to make them. And uh, they're a good looking, interesting pair of maple wood chairs. Probably around about uh, 1860 in date. Difficult to be 100% accurate on the date, but it's gonna be around about there. And a nice pair, worthy of uh, any collection of campaign furniture.